how far or close are we from a CO2 distribution system where you know, point source carbon capture on things like coal plants and chemical facilities could supply the merchant CO2 needs? How far or, or, or close are we to that? Jeff, Holyoke? I, I defer more to Jim on that because that's exactly what they're, they're trying to build out. Um, I, I think we're still a fairly long way away though, but uh, the, the infrastructure is certainly be, being built out. But Jim, like, why don't you speak to that one? Yeah, I think I think the key here is is we're close. And as we mentioned earlier, this process is is preparation and education. And when you look at a market that is switching from a byproduct to a co-product, there are pricing implications that are very sensitive. So an end user where I where I came from, if I look at what I was paying for CO2 and then I see where the market is going, it's going to be more expensive. Now, how much more expensive is, is, is really, uh, I don't think anybody knows quite yet, but it's price acceptance from the end users that's ultimately going to be the critical part of that. Um, and so I think we're close. And as the pipelines get the permitting processes uh, completed, I think once that happens, this will turn into you know fifth gear and you're gonna start to see a lot of activity so that those same market participants that are experiencing, whether it's force majeures or, or a lot of volatility in their pricing, that there will be an avenue to be able to take CO2 and use it from sources like that. Now, what I will, I'll make one more point is, if you think about the three sources of CO2, ethanol, ammonia, and then the underground sources down south, I think the market's used to having some pretty cheap CO2, even though it was quote unquote interruptible. Well, as we start going through the different uses of CO2, and, and Jeff had mentioned um, that the e-fuels business, uh, if you read an article, Google an article from uh, a couple weeks ago that it's HIF and Denberry, and I believe it was Monarch, they announced that they're gonna be purchasing over 2 million tons of CO2 or a, I think it's a sustainable aviation fuel facility, not positive, but the aggregate demand in the U.S. right now, excluding EOR, is about 10 and a half million tons per year. That facility alone, that deal, was for over 2 million. So you're talking, what, close to 20% of the current market for one facility. So you've got biogenic sources that are looking to get pointed towards the, the new, um, you know, the, the next gen fuels. You've got other end users in food and bev that that are paying a cheap price and and really to answer the question finally is that you've got power plants and industrial facilities that do have co2 it can be captured it's just going to be more expensive than the really clean co2 that's coming off ethanol facilities or from underground sources or from ammonia plants and it's the end user acceptance of that increased price along with the permitting of the pipelines, once those two come together, you'll start to see a lot more action there. But I'll make one more point is that there's way more CO2 out there than the market can currently use. So it's going to be a supply and demand ebb and flow. And that's where sequestration becomes critical to where what the market can't use can go downhole. Uh, um, there's also uh, uh, Wolf uh, Midstream is is doing a CO2 pipeline that they're running from uh, uh, some uh, fertilizer plant in in mid Alberta uh, down to some um, EOR fields as well. But they're looking to expand that as well up to the oil sands as well. So in Canada, they've started on a, a pipeline network, and and certainly that's necessary. But it not all in only that's not the only case. So because as Jim mentioned, there's lots of CO2 point sources that are very close to the markets. And uh, the gas companies are very good at moving CO2, so it can either be trucked or railed quite easily from one source to another that's very close. And so if you just pick the, the areas where you have your CO2 demand, there's usually, you know, it, it doesn't have to be an, uh, an ethanol plant or something. It, it can be, you know, for example, a, a gas turbine. Uh, you can take 
those gas turbines, you could you can capture the CO2, and there's lots of purification technology that you can convert that CO2 into food grade CO2 as well, quite easily. So, um, uh, you know, like I said, the transportation network isn't isn't the challenge. It's it's really just about getting the plants built and the fact that as CO2 becomes more expensive as a commodity. I know some in some cases on the East Coast of the United States, they've been offering up to a thousand dollars a ton. Well, that kind of makes sense from a capture point when I can I can capture the CO2 uh, for like around between 30 and 50 dollars a ton. So you can see there's a pretty good economic spread there uh, in which you can capture it and then you can you can actually ship it by a truck or rail to where it's needed.